From high atop the mountaintop of Mount Manitoba, it's the Hall of Fame show, season three, episode 28, with myself, Kirk Buckner, and Evan Nolan. Who are we? Well, we run NotInHallOfFame.com, the fictitious athlete Hall of Fame, the fictitious rock and roll Hall of Fame, and of course, the United States Athletic Hall of Fame, which we encourage you to vote on now, and you can do so at www.NotInHallOfFame.com forward slash USA. You can vote on the other stuff too, but you know, that's something. That's, that's my forward slash. slash. A oh, forward slash. Okay. Forward slash. <laughs> Backslash is this one. Yeah, I don't know. And dabbing is something that I think is now out of being cool. Well, who was the, who was the quarterback who always did that? He's yeah, not even, well, kind of fits that too, doesn't it? Yeah, true. Of course, we're more likely to see him than, I guess, Colin Kaepernick. Did you hear how that workout went, according to Warren Sapp? Apparently not that well. Apparently not that well, but... Since when is Warren Sapp a reliable source of information, though, to be fair? This, this is also true, but also since when does Warren Sapp feel the need to lie? Also true. And he just said so. from what he heard, but that's whatever. Got it. Uh, I, either way, I, if that's even remotely true, I guess that's that. Okay. And well, that, might, that might not be the worst thing to happen. But just for maybe this to be put, put to rest once and for all. We'll see. So, we'll see. Uh, anyway. Moving on. Moving on. There is uh, the hockey list on Not in Hall of Fame has been revised. Have you had a chance to take a look at it? I have not really. It's okay. been a kind of crazy week. My wife is uh, away. She is in London uh, for a business trip. She and this, we moved out of Washington, D.C. because it was too hot. And she couldn't handle the heat. And of course, she was in London on the two hottest days in the history of the city. So. Ah. Okay, interesting. Well, then, then maybe, maybe when you finally visit Winnipeg, I guess it'll be in a winter month. Yeah, well, not, not when she's there. It'll be the hottest time ever. So. Ah, well, uh, I don't know. Manitoba's got a lot to say about that. But yeah, so I think it's going to be really interesting next year for the Hockey Hall of Fame because there's only one person who's going to get in for sure. And that's okay. the person who's now number one, and that's former New York Ranger goalie Henrik Lundqvist. Understood. Now, I think he's a lock. But there's nobody else who's even ranked in the top 250. Oh, wow. Really? Who just came up new. So this makes it wide open for what are your guys uh, that you've been pushing Pierre, for? I mean, Pierre Turgeon? Yes, Pierre well, Turgeon. Jer- Jeremy Roenick, I guess, would also sort of be one of my guys. So, Well, uh, yeah, I can sort of tell you what the rank is right now. And all of this is sort of based on initially what I have. But I, since we have future sections, people are voting ahead of time giving their uh, giving their opinions and it's all amalgamated uh i'd like to tell you there's some kind of scientific process there's not but i try to be i try to take in as much input as possible and this does affect rankings hence why number two with a very high percentage of votes from all of you is alexander mcgillney uh, mcgillney i think has an excellent shot next year because when i looked at all the ones when they call when they call snubs mcgillney is the one name that came up the most yeah. Would have been Alfredson had it not, it was always Alfredson, now it's McGillney. Understood. So I think this is, uh, this, this could really bode well for him. So he's now number two. Number three is someone who won't get in. Uh, we've talked about that before, is Teron Fleury. Yeah, there's, <laughs> talk about a complicated history with the NHL. Mm. And hockey in general. Yeah. And hockey likes its woke stuff. Which is going to be interesting, considering what we're going to be talking about later, isn't it? Yeah. yeah um, I'll tell you what my ugly was. So. Yeah, uh, I I bought, I was wondering how much play that got in the United States. Not that much. Yeah, but, but, I, but I saw it. <laughs> yeah, yes, you saw it because I also know what website you go to every day. So That's I figured, okay, Evan's going to see this. I'm not going to say anything. I don't want to see because I wanted to see if you were going to bring it up, and sure enough. Yeah, uh, you're going to, but we'll go into that more later because I think a lot of people may not know what we're talking about. Uh, but yeah, Flurry. Uh, for those wondering why he's controversial, uh, he's uh, sort of been a little bit far right wing lately. And as much as I consider myself a wingless individual, that stuff doesn't play. Shilling, comma, Kurt. At the same time, though, he was also the victim of one of the worst people in the history of hockey. Absolutely. But he had, but that was true two years ago and three years ago. He's been eligible for a while. And 
Flurry is always Flurry acted and snorted and was abused as his way out of the Hall, Hall of Fame because it was such a great story. The guy is shorter than I am, and I'm not a tall man. I'm five eight. Mm-hmm. So I mean, for Flurry to even make it in the NHL was impressive. Let alone become a six time All Star. Let alone carry the Stanley Cup. Mm-hmm. And he did all this, and he. And it could have been, it could have been more, but Flurry, it's going to be hard. It's going to be awful, awful hard. Because they, they, they love, they don't like controversy, uh, which brings to number four, Jeremy Roenick, same thing. Less controversial in my less, eyes. Less controversial than number, the fact that Jeremy Roenick out of three, four, and five is the least controversial is saying something. Well, yes, because number five is Don Cherry. And for those wondering, like, why is Don Cherry even here? Because you don't rank, I, I generally don't rank coaches or contributors or whatnot. Uh, Don Cherry was sort of grandfathered in when I, the first, second list I ever came up with was the hockey list. And Don Cherry at that time to me, and still is to a certain point, one of the most egregious snubs. Saying that. It would be, it'd be hard to see him get in with the way things are now. Yes, the way things are now, I mean, Don Cherry was always Don Cherry. Just everything changed around him. Correct. If, if that makes any sense. And that he was always entertaining as hell, but he, it reached a point where I think really what did it is when CBC lost Hockey Night in Canada to Sportsnet, uh, here it was Sportsnet or TSN, I forget, it doesn't matter. Uh, Cherry went along with it was because they, they bought out his contract. And I don't know that, I think it was just one of those things where you know, you've got a smaller corporation thinking, you know, this is an awful lot to pay for somebody who's on TV two minutes a week. Yeah. And every year he moved the needle less and less because people, Don Cherry is just a man of a different era. Now, for those unaware, Don Cherry is at one point, could, was arguably one of the most famous men in Canada. I'll argue that because well, he was. I mean, CBC did a two-part miniseries, fictional bio thing on him. They don't do that for a whole lot of people. Correct. They did that for Don Cherry. Can't say that I watched it because. Hey, uh, they're doing a seven-part series on Derek Jeter, the most boring man in the history of sports. So... Ah, just when there's a microphone in front of him. Yeah, well, that maybe that is true. That is true. He is the only person we do know who gave gift baskets to those who he slept with. So, what was the difference between Tiger Woods and Derek Jeter? Derek Jeter never said, "I'm a happily married man." Mm-hmm. That's the difference. That's why when we when all the gift basket stories came out, nobody said shit because Derek was never pretending to be uh, Mr. Wholesome. Correct. I mean, he kind of was, but he but it was always with a nudge and a wink. Yeah. You know, uh, Ty, that, that sort of, that was the biggest thing. But anyway, yeah, so Don Cherry, so I got three, got three, four, and five. Neither of them have a shot in hell right now, unless things change. And they won't. But yeah, Ronick has got the best shot out of those. Agreed. Uh, Pierre Turgeon at number six. I think that's the highest he's been, or, co- or close to. Uh, Turgeon is a big project of yours, and for the simple reason, it's a very good reason, he has more points than anyone else who's not in the hall. I think 1,300 and something. I, I'm not thinking that hard on this. <laughs> he's he's yeah. got the most points of anyone not in the Hall of Fame, and the only reason that he's not in the Hall of Fame is because Canada's bitter about a fight from 40 years ago. No, Canada's bitter about the fight he didn't participate in 40 years ago. Fair. His reaction to a fight from 40 years ago. Which was nothing. Fair enough. You just pretend to fight. And they say, I was there. Didn't you see me? I was in the corner. I was doing this. That's all he had to do. But yeah, that is literally the reason why. Is there, I mean, it's, there is a little more to it than that. In the 80s and 90s when he played, I don't want to say that 1,300 points was easy because it isn't, but it was a hell of a lot easier then. That's true. I mean, that is a true statement. So. I mean, like uh, Jerome McGillan walked in with a lot less points and no one had a problem with it because it was a lot harder. I did see something the other day that from – was it from 1979 through 1999 only three people ever won the Hart trophy yeah i think that's that's yeah it was great gretzky lemieux and yager were the only three yeah it's crazy or, or i don't know if it was 20 but yeah something to that effect well didn't I, well when did eiserman win his first i don't know yeah but either way it wasn't very many i mean it was a just a different different time in here 
I mean, again, McGillney's not in, and he he's a, he has 76 goals mm-hmm. in a season. Right. Uh, there, are te- well, there are teams whose point leader is less than 76 points in a season now. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, exactly. Number seven, John LeClaire, one of my favorite power forwards of all time. One of the... One of the greatest American hockey players of all time. Certainly Absolutely. the greatest athlete, probably the greatest athlete from the state of Vermont. Yeah, I, I don't know any others. I'm sure there's a lot, but I don't there, know. There are probably a couple of skiers here or there, but it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's a thin crowd, so. Number eight, Claude Provost, uh, multi-time champion with the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, number nine, somebody I'm very big on, another American, Mike Richter. I'm very, very big on him. Uh, Anyone who stands up as the best player in an international tournament when the greats are playing? Yeah. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of him getting in. And number 10, speaking of like a different era, Bernie Nichols, who actually is, has a 100, 150-point season, and nobody remembers. Yeah, Bernie Nichols, to me, is our slightly worse version of Pierre Turchon. <laughs> so I would, Yeah, I wouldn't disagree with that. I, I wouldn't disagree with that at all. Here, my question though, number twelve on your well, eleven's Mike Vernon, but yeah. twelve is Keith Kachuk. Mm-hmm. Uh, what does Keith Kachuk or is his son know about Calgary? What's going on with Calgary right now? Uh, Nobody wants to be there. Well, once Gaudreau, once Gaudreau left, uh, Gaudreau left Calgary for less money in Columbus. I, I guess it was closer to home. He, he left. He, he left for a worse team. I mean, it, it's shocking. And then. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, they, they're just joking that Edmonton broke their heart. They broke Calgary. I don't, I don't know what it is. Uh, I, I thought Cal, well, you know what? It's me. I did it because I said at the start of, at the start of the playoffs that Calgary was going to beat Florida. And if you know anything about hockey, you'll know that I know nothing about prediction about predicting hockey when it comes to this. I, I did it. It's well, me. You're in Mount Manitoba. So. Mount Manitoba, yes, uh, it must be me. I, I I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. That you know, like they had probably they had the best line in hockey, and they're going to be left with one third of it. Crazy, yeah. It's that's how it is. But when I look at this, we know what one of those players is. This is a big shot for McGillney and Turgeon. Hundred percent. This is this is going to be the and, best shot that they will ever have. I think. Yeah, it's entirely possible. I, I mean, I think. I mean, Lundqvist is in. I think McGilney certainly is the most likely second person to get in. Mm-hmm. I do. I love. I love Turgeon's candidacy, but I mean, I just think there's much more. But it's also public feeling behind McGilney. But it's also the same time where they could just like throw some weird monkey wrench in. You know, yeah, like okay. like as the Zuboff Carbono. Yeah, Zub- what Zuboff and Carbono in your forties before, right? When they got uh, Carbono was in the twenties. Zuboff was late thirties. Okay, so I can't remember exactly. So let's let's just pick someone randomly from the twenties and thirties. Just looking rant rant. Well, here, how about Vinny LeCavalier? LeCavalier, hey, you know, why not? LeCavalier and uh, okay, we're gonna do the same thing. LeCavalier and Brad Richards. You know, two guys from the same team. Hey, two same team. team. Hold on, hold on, though. I, I think I see, I see, uh, oh, I thought I saw someone who was on that, uh, the Stars team, but I, I was wrong. Oh, the, the, I guess Dallas is represented enough. Yeah, Neil Broughton. <laughs> Wasn't he on that team? Well, oh, he was on, no, he, well, I don't think he, he played for Minnesota when they were the Star, North that, Stars. That's true. Yeah. So. Uh, well, I mean. Neil San, Sanis Ozelich. There we go. That's who we got. That was, hey, he was one whole player. Was a one hell of a player. Yeah. I'm looking forward to October 1st when then I will now live above the Dale Howarchuk statue. Ah, nice. Which will be pretty cool. Cool. Yes, I think so. Uh, a couple other lists that have been revised, sort of. Uh, the top 50 Detroit Lions have revised, and nothing changed. Fair enough. <laughs> There's nothing to change. Last year there was also nothing to change. The year before that, nothing to change. Jared Jared Goff hasn't uh, moved into the top 50 yet. No, he has not moved into the top 50. No, no, may, 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 there's still a chance. I'm saying there's a chance. Uh, the Green Bay Packers was interesting because Aaron Rodgers has now moved. I have a number two. 
behind only Brett Favre. I, I have Rogers Pat. I know you're not a big Rogers fan. I'm not a fan of him as a person. In some well, ways, he got. I do enjoy Rogers' tattoo. He got his first tattoo. Did you see it? I saw it. It was a perfectly fine tattoo. The, the, my favorite comment underneath it was, "You know how Kyrie Irving thinks? Put that on my arm." <laughs> That's good. good. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I I mean, I guess so. My my reaction wasn't Aaron Rodgers there. I just... Is the greatest Packer... Most people will say that the greatest Packers fan, so the greatest Packer of all time still is Don Hudson. Like, where where do you have him on the list? Three. I have him him passing Hudson. So it's Favre, Favre number one. Uh, Barb Rogers Hudson, and it's hard. It's so cl- it's so hard on these because I, I just I just don't feel that Favre. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I I wouldn't put Favre past Hudson. I don't have a problem with mm-hmm. Rogers being past Favre, even though Favre has more long term stuff when it comes to Packer Packer information. But I don't know. Hudson still seems like he should be one or two to me. Yeah. Again, what? I'm, a, what? I'm a Patriots fan living in Bears country. What the hell do I know? <laughs> I'm a Canadian who co-founded the American Athletic United States Athletic Hall of Fame. There you go. There we go. Yes. While, yes. while living in Barbados. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, yeah. That's awesome. Ah. So the smorgasbord of shit. There were so many different things that we that we could have talked about and I'm sure, like, and that's just where I just go off on God knows what. And... <sighs> Your discretion is advised. <laughs> it can be. It can be. Uh, I just want to say that my new favorite baseball player is, plays for Oakland, and his name is Sky Bolt. His name is Sky Bolt. There, you have a player with the first name Jeter. I think that's kind of interesting. <laughs> Yeah, Sky. I do think that Sky Bolt, though, seems like how they tried to fly their one All Star representative to the All Star game. So, which is the same amount of people in attendance when they when they're at home. So, pretty much. Yeah, they're. I don't know what's going on with Oakland as a franchise. I don't know if they're doing this intentionally or whatever. But the A's are far too good historically for this to be happening. For the for this to be their fourth, because they're going to move. Like th- that's a given. Oak- Oakland will not have a baseball team in two years. Yep. Th- they won't. They won't. Uh, there's no point. And then also, it- and a lot of times you see cities whine about their stadiums or teams walk- whine about their stadiums. Oakland's right. Yeah, that is true. That- that's a total dump. I mean, what did you- were you the one who were telling me there was more feral cats than probably fans? I think it was yes. you. Hundred yeah. percent more foul cats and fans. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. So that, that's that's I don't really have a whole lot. There's a bunch of other things that uh, has been on my mind in terms of sports, but uh, I, I had one little thing on the WNBA. I watched because I know I always go off on it. Oh, it's always it's always the WNBA with you because they're stupid. But continue. Okay. Okay. Did you see the their all star game? I did. I can honestly say I did not see anyone's All Star game. I didn't see the MLBs. Yeah. I didn't see anybody's. Okay, so like I watched bits and pieces, but we were busy. So like I, I saw like a couple of bits of the opening, and uh, and I, I didn't see the whole thing. But so they gave a trophy to the MVP. Did you see this? The trophy was maybe this big. That's it. It was like this big. And it just looked like your standard standard trophy. So I literally, with no hyperbole, no exaggeration, have participation soccer trophies bigger than this from when I was 11 and 12. It's, it's not the size of the trophy. It's what you did to earn it, my friend. <laughs> okay, sure. But I mean, Sorry, I just... tree, this is, you can't blame the men for this one. Can't blame the straight white guys on this one. Your fucking league. Go out and get a real trophy. How hard is this? Treat yourself like a sport. And that and that right there, and that's sort of what triggered that make I'm gonna go on a whole thing. That's what they do wrong. What do I always say about the when you go on the WNBA site? They're really bad at just promoting like how they're athletes. They're correct. 
They do, it, it's it's like a we're all it's, social. It, hmm? it, it's all causes and no, and no. Death. And and I say and I and I've said over and over again, have as many causes as you want or have no causes. I don't care. You know, like right. you're right to do whatever you want and think however you want. But if you're not sort of like saying, okay, well, here we have the here's our best rebounder, and here's why. Here's someone who is the most accurate, and here's why. Look at this highlight film. If you put that in the same level as your lesbian fashion show, which they do, people are going to turn off. Why is it that next week, Amanda Nunez and Jennifer Pena are going to headline, uh, I don't know the name of the stadium in Dallas. Uh, so if I, no, that's... Uh, that's... Well, not the stadium, sorry, the arena. Uh, what were the maps play? So they're going to fill out, yeah. they're going to fill out that arena, probably draw about a, over 100,000 in pay-per-view buys. And it's headlined by a Brazilian lesbian going out, trying to get her title back. She's the draw. How did they pull this off? Simple. They treat it like a sport. So those 18,000 men, predominantly men who are gonna be in there, would all probably cheer Trump if he walked in there because they have cheered Trump when he walks in there. And yet they're the most progressive fans in sports. Tell me I'm wrong. It, it's it's the strangest thing but it's true and i think the big difference is they act they treat their athletes like they're athletes completely mm -hmm. so when when uh, jennifer Pena is going to walk out there you're going to see her stat line takedown percentage like everything say so that's what they that's what they need to do better i didn't i didn't i don't know if this is true or not but apparently in the first period they didn't even have the score running on the wnba all-star game who screwed this up? This yeah, is the Bush League shit that if you're the commissioner, the, there's no excuse for this. None. I got another thing here. Actually, uh -oh. my smorgasbord is taking longer. Sorry. Go for it. I've been thinking about this. Now, you've been vocal about the LIV golf, right? Mm -hmm. You want to know if, what I would do if I was a Saudi billionaire right now? Buy women's basketball? No. Okay. <laughs> no, but I would by women's tennis or men's tennis. Now, whether they do that with women's tennis, I don't know because of their very backwards attitude when it comes to that. But look at what's going on right now with tennis. The French Open has pissed off Naomi Osaka. Wimbledon's pissed off how many people? The US Open, uh, this I don't understand. Maybe you understand better than I do. So what, Jokovic can't play, but he played there last year? How does that happen? That I don't know. So, you, Jokovic is the biggest draw. The best players, uh, the number one ranked players, as Medvedev, a Russian who's not wasn't allowed to play Wimbledon. Why not go after these guys? That's what I would do. Makes, I mean, they're ripe for it. They're absolutely ripe for it. If so, they did it to themselves. Well, that's what happens with monopolies all the time. Exactly. I mean, like you, they're, they're they're believing that a lot of this is bigger than the game, and maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I don't know, but you don't have a whole lot of stars right now anymore, especially in tennis, where if the big anti-Saudi state sentiment is in the United States, and you've got no top ten male American stars, yeah, this is the time to do it. I and could they, they're not making a whole lot of money beyond Jokovic, Medvedev, and Nadal. They're not. Yeah. They're not making huge sponsorship money. Jokovic doesn't give a shit. He definitively does not. Neither does his wife. Yeah. So you get him and you get Medvedev. Now, I, I can't speak much on Medvedev and his uh, politics. I don't know what they are. Uh, he's the one who si signed no war on the camera. Okay. All right. So then, he, 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 but he's also, he also got blocked. He also got banned from Wimbledon. Because right. it's something he had nothing to do with. Right. Yeah. You know, so there's something off on that. This is right for the picking. It really is. And let's say you did that on the women's circuit, which the Saudis wouldn't, because and we know why. But the, wouldn't those women jump for it? I mean, the three biggest names 
are the Williams sisters who aren't any good anymore. Venus is pretty much done. Serena is, is, is on fumes. And Naomi has gotten her own head so bad, she, she can't get out of first rounds. They would all jump. Wouldn't they? I don't know if the Williams sisters would at this point. Well, no, I didn't say the Williams sisters. But, the, but everybody I'm, I'm else. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because like the like there is not such a thing as life changing money for those three. Correct. Especially Serena. Correct. I mean, imagine that. I mean, you, like you've made fifty million dollars and your husband would cry if she if you woke up with your bank account. Right. <laughs> so no, so like it, those those it, three it's the it's the Brady problem. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I mean that's something that if I was tennis and I'm looking at golf, I'd be I'd maybe sort of uh, not be so pompous, which is interesting to say for, because these are two of the most pompous sports going on. Right. Well, they're two of the individual sports too. Right. So be interesting. Which means they're vulnerable. They are totally vulnerable. Because LIV is not going away. Somehow. It's crazy. But it's a play thing. It's a hobby. Can the Saudis just buy college football? Well, are you talking about that? No, I do, no, I'm not. I just feel like I just feel like that's also right for the picking right now. Just give a whole bunch of money to Iowa State and like all the teams are going to be losers in this whole thing. Iowa State, Syracuse, Boston College, Louisville, you, uh, BYU. Just give them a whole bunch of money to play a league that they just throw money at because I mean that's what's happening with everybody else. And I think I'm just this year. I'm just going to focus on one league and that's it. Maybe just the SEC and Big Ten. Yeah, just, there's just, no point watching anything. I, I else. can't. I can't with college football anymore. It's been years. Yeah, so. I hear you. But yeah, that that's my smorgasbord. It turned out the, the, the second idea was very very interesting. The first one is the same. You know, what? I mean, NBA treat yourselves like you're an actual sport. But the second one oh. with with the Saudis buying tennis, I don't see that makes perfect sense. So. It's it's ripe for it. It's perfectly ripe for it. The only thing that is lacking is the facilities that could actually do it, which they could easily buy. Right. You know, and sort of create something for that. But you know, they don't have to do it in the States. They could do that all in Europe. True. What would stop them. And True. what would stop them? Like if they've already got one toy, why not another? that is far more vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah, Europe's too busy being on fire right now to care, so. <laughs> uh, uh, speaking of on fire, the death roll? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we lost quite a bit because we, we were, weren't able to connect last week, so. You got yeah, last week, last week was kind of weird. We're doing this on a Wednesday, which we almost never do. Mm -hmm. uh, we just weren't able to connect last week with stuff. So, um, life gets in the way. Life does get in the way. Um, so I will say that the uh, beige mistress may have taken some last week. Andras Tarosic, God, I have no idea how to pronounce that right because it's T O R O C S I K. Was an oh. umlaut over the first O and two. Sky commas over the second O, two apostrophes. So I have no idea how to pronounce those things. And what's a sky comma? It's a joke from uh, Gary Goldman. Oh, uh, okay. An apostrophe. Oh. An apostrophe, two, two sky commas, sorry. Um, yeah, so uh, I have no idea. But Andras Tarosic passed away at the age of 67, played 45 times for Hungarian national team, uh, and played from for 74 to 89 professionally. Mm -hmm. uh, including his stop in 1988 with the North York Rockets. Oh. Uh, yeah, he scored, uh, he passed away at the age of 67. We, I'm going to warn you, we do have a lot of people here, mm -hmm. so I'm going to kind of run through a few of them, uh, just to talk about them briefly and, and move on, just so we're not here for the next 25 minutes. Um, first one from tennis, uh, we lost Pancho Contreras, who it was the captain of the most uh, successful Mexican uh, Davis Cup team of all time. Passed away at the age of 88, also won the doubles championship uh, at 
the NCAA doubles championships in 55 and 56 while at USC. Won a gold medal in mixed doubles at the Pan Am Games in 63 and at the Central American and Caribbean Games in 59. Uh, he passed away at the age of 88. Uh, also lost, let me just move that. Uh, Colin Stubbs, who was the head of the Australian Open from 1978 to 1994. He was also a player. He never made it past the third round in any major tournament. He made it third round of Wimbledon in 67. More importantly, he's the one who really built and led the, the Australian Open for many, many years. He passed away at the age of 81. Uh, from the world of diving, which we don't talk about a lot. No. Uh, Hobie Billingsley passed away at the age of 95. Member of the International Swimming Hall of Fame. Uh, was a diving American diving champion later coached high school college and Olympic diving teams for decades we should have started with that we're just going to dive into the deaths oh there we go that would have been better but I yeah I, there's so many I'm just trying to organize them so Sorry. that's where I ended up but it was, it was very good it was, that was that was one of your better ones so um yeah but he passed away at the age of 95 um from the world of stock car racing uh bobby east passed away i uh, mostly raced on the truck series and and in, in uh, nascar we also did arca and usac he was stabbed to death at a gas station yeah i was reading about that some drifter came up to him at a gas station they had got some sort of verbal altercation the guy pulled out a knife and stabbed him in the chest like what the heck? I don't know. Uh, he was the uh, 2012 USAC Silver Crown Series champ, the 2013 as well, 2004 Midget Series champ, 2008 Copper World Classic winner, and the 2004 USAC Driver of the Year. I have passed away, unfortunately, at the age of 37. So one of the weirder causes of death this week. Um, from the world of hockey, uh, we, there's been a run of this. There have been a, several runs and stuff, but the members of the 67 championship leaps have been devastated over the last three months. I think this is the fourth one we've oh, come up with. Away? Larry Jeffrey passed away at the age of 81. I'm not familiar with him. What do you play? He's a left, left winger okay. uh, for them. Um, was... Uh, Selected from the Maple Leafs in the 67 expansion draft by the Penguins. Mm. Uh, who then traded him to the Rangers for three minor leaguers, but played with the Red Wings, Leafs, and Rangers in his career from 58 to 69. Uh, but yeah, that, that team is just losing people left and right. It can't be uh, too many left. Years. There cannot be that many left. I mean, they are in their 80s. I, I so. hate to say it. I mean, it seems like it's, we're going to have like another Cubs situation where there's not going to be one living Maple Leaf champion. I mean, there were, yeah, there, there was like four titles in the, in the 60s, so it may not necessarily be from 67, but can't be many. Yeah, I don't know. There can't be, you're right. There just cannot be that many people left. Um, from the world of baseball, uh, we lost uh, one of the greatest scouts of all time, Mike Brito. Uh, who's the guy who signed Fernando Valenzuela? He's a Dodgers scout for 45 years. Uh, passed away at the age of 88. No, sorry, 87. He hadn't had his 88th birthday yet. Uh, also passing away, the oldest living major leaguer with the appropriate name of George Elder. Uh, passed away at the age of 101. Played one season for the St. Louis Browns, 1949. Hit 250 uh, with two runs batted in. He played from July 22nd through September 25th of 49. I just so read, uh, or like, uh, I, I, for like the All-Star game, they, they, didn't they honor Rachel Robinson? Turned 100? Yeah, she turned 100. Man. Yeah. So the previous, the previous older living, oldest living baseball player was Eddie Robinson, who passed away in October. I don't know who the new one is, uh, but it's... Yeah, living to 100 is pretty amazing, particularly if your last name is Elder. Um, <laughs> the biggest name we lost from baseball this week, though, was Ducky Schofield. 
uh, who is the father of the of a three generation major league baseball play uh, baseball uh, dynasty, I guess. Played shortstop. Uh, first game was fifty three for the Cardinals. Last game was in seventy one for the Brewers. Eighteen years during which he only hit two twenty seven with twenty one homers and two. Uh, 211 RBI. Different era for a shortstop, though. Yeah, but he was a member of the 1960 World Series champion Pittsburgh Pirates. Mm -hmm. uh, passed away at the age of 87. His son, you may remember, is Dick Schofield, mm -hmm. who played, who was on the 93 uh, uh, Blue Jays, among others. Mm -hmm. uh, but his grandson is Jason Worth. Oh. Who played 15 seasons in the majors himself. I didn't know they were related. Yep, I didn't either until I was reading everything. So um, his daughter, so Dick Schofield played for 14 seasons. His daughter, Kim, is actually a member of the Springfield, uh, Illinois Sports Hall of Fame uh, for her ability in track and field. So there you go. They people all over the place. Hmm. But he pa passed away at the age of 87. Uh, from the world of basketball, we only really lost uh, one person. Uh, Hall of Famer, though, uh, referee Hugh Evans. Oh, uh, passed okay. away. He's not. Yeah, at the he just age, got it. He just got into the hall too. Uh, not too long ago. Yeah, passed away at the age of eighty-one. Mm -hmm. uh, when did he get elected? April, April of twenty twenty-two. Okay, yeah, and no, I remember that name. Yeah. Yep. So he's going to be enshrined posthumously coming up in September, but he, he uh, officiated almost 2,000 regular season games, 170 playoff games, 35 NBA finals, uh, four NBA all-star games. Um, and probably, unfortunately, the most famous game he ever refereed was game five of the 84 finals, in which the Boston Garden was played in 97 degree heat. And he actually fainted on the court. And there was a delay while they were getting him up and moving again. So, Lots of temperature talk today, isn't it? There's a lot. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So he passed away at age 81. Unfortunately, we'll not get to make his speech. I don't know what, what health he was in coming in, but that is uh, definitely not happening. Now, when, so. when you're at that age, right? Something can hit you so far. Yeah. Um, from football, we lost quite a few. Uh, Richard Anderson. First round pick in the 2000 draft, passed away at the age of 45. Uh, only played one, uh, two seasons technically with the Carolina Panthers. Uh, then had got busted for drugs, didn't meet the requirements to come back. Ended up playing for Calgary Stampeders and never really played again. Mm -hmm. but more interesting though, he that night 2000 draft had two players from Jackson State drafted in the first round. Oh, okay. Where he and Sylvester Morris. Interestingly, it's the second time. Here's your trivia question. It's the second time two Jackson State players were drafted in the first round together. Can you tell me who the no. other two are? And here's the no. trivia question. Here's a, the hint for the trivia question. They're drafted the same year. They're both Hall of Fame players. I, I just know who coaches Jackson State now. Wait, did you play there? Dion? No, Dion did not. He went to Florida State. Okay. It was, I'll tell you now. Yeah, tell me. Walter Payton mm -hmm. and, Ro and Robert Brazil in 1975. Both were drafted out of Jackson State. Uh, I, can, I can just hear some people listening right now saying, how do you not know this? Especially if Bill was not listening. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, yeah. So, uh, but he passed away at the age of 45 from, uh, he was, yeah, pancreatic cancer, which is not the way to go. Mm -hmm. Um second here uh oh we got back to him uh also passing away member of the 2001 championship new england patriots charles johnson mm -hmm. uh mostly known for his time with the steelers as a wide receiver uh 17th pick in the 94 draft out of colorado passed away at the age of 50 um the cause of death wasn't listed but he had been working with tory holt willie parker and Dwayne washington uh as a uh, uh, Heritage High School of Wake Forest, North Carolina. He was the assistant athletic director. The other guys were coaches there. Uh, but he passed away at the age of 50. I don't know from what. So. Hmm. Uh, from 
Uh, also passing away, this is a weird one. That's why I included it. A uh, member of the Oregon Ducks last year, Spencer Webb, a tight end, passed away cliff diving, hit his head on the way down. Passed yeah. Away 22. I... And sadly, these diving things, uh, they're far too common. Yeah. As someone who's jumped off a high object into a body of water, uh, I always make sure it's something that I can't hit my head on, like a, like a railroad trestle. Uh, I don't like jumping off of jagged things. doesn't work so well. No. Well, I mean, it's uh, like Pauline and I, we had to know well, someone she used to work with. Uh, he passed away falling off a boat in Bermuda. And, you know, so, he, um, he hit, hit with his head and then, yeah. anywho. Anyway, uh, also passed away, former cornerback of the Bills, Niners, Seahawks of Texas, Jimmy Williams, passed away at the age of 43. Um, member of the uh, SEC football legends class of 2013. Um, I don't know what he passed away of either. But 43 is also far too young to pass away. Very much so. Very much so. Uh, Gary Moeller passed away as well. Former coach of the, or interim coach of the Detroit Lions uh, back in 2000. Uh, also won three Big Ten championships uh, at Michigan, uh, taking over from the legendary Bo Schembechler before Lloyd Carr took over. Uh, two-time Big Ten coach of the year in 91 and 92. Uh, he passed away at the age of 81. And finally, here uh, out of football, anyway, uh, mm -hmm. can you tell me what record Bob Parson holds currently in the in Major League history, or in the, the NFL history? I got nothing. Bob Parsons was the punter on the '81 Bears, uh, and holds the records for tied for most punts in a season with 114 in a 16-game season. I'm not saying the 81 Bears sucked. <laughs> the 81 Bears sucked. <laughs> uh, fifth round pick uh, out of uh, Penn State. Played for the Bears from 72 to 83. Played two, his last two seasons with Birmingham Stallions, the original version of them. Uh, passed away in Lake Zurich, not too far from me at the age of 72. So. I, no, I never would have guessed that. 100, well, do you think that, that record's going to get broken? Ever? It's it, some, he's actually a tie. He holds okay. Someone else is tied with that record. I just closed it, so I can't tell you who that person is. But there are two of them with 114 punts. With the current way, said, with the way offense is, I mean, even with, the, with that extra game, I don't know. Yeah, and people are going for it on fourth down significantly more than they used to. So yeah, that seems like, like a record that could stand quite a ways. Yes, I, I think so. Um. From the world of golf, we lost Tommy Jacobs, uh, who finished second in the Masters in 66 and second in the U.S. Open in 64, uh, best known as golf cars owner-operator, and uh, yeah, passed away at the age of 87. All right, now we get to music. Quite a few here. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, one of the greatest horn players who you've never heard of Vincent DeRosa passed away at the age of 101. He was on his first recording was in 1935. His last recording was in 2008. He recorded backups with Henry Mancini, John Williams, Frank Sinatra, Barry Manilow, Frank Zappa, Boz Skaggs, Ella Fitzgerald, Harry Nielsen, Stan Kenton, Henry Mancini, sorry, Henry Mancini, sorry. It's a couple places. The Monkees, Sammy Davis Jr., and Mel Torme, among others. Like, these session musicians that we yeah. don't know anything about are nuts to me. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, yeah, I've, I've heard him probably 70 times and not known it. He, I mean, the fifth dimension, I'm just going through further mm -hmm. down. Like, uh, just, it's Mike, Michael Nesmith on his own. Like, it's just crazy. All the things, Judy Collins, Natalie Cole, Miles Davis, John Denver, Neil Diamond. It's just like, it's nuts. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Like, if you play horn for Earth, Wind, and Fire, that's kind of an important role. <laughs> I would think so. So, but yeah, he passed away at the age of 101. 
which is a good long, long time. Uh, also passing away, uh, I, Idris Phillips at the age of 64, uh, very well known in the jazz world, played with Richie Havens, among others. Uh, I don't have one he passed, passed away of, but he was 64 years old. Um, uh, David Dalton passed away. Uh, best known as one of the fa the founding editor of Rolling Stone. Oh, uh, he was eighty when he passed. Uh, also passing away, uh, Michael James Jackson, not Michael Jackson. Michael James Jackson, a record producer, best known for producing basically all of albums, all the Kiss albums in the eighties. Uh, passed away at the age of sixty five. Hmm. Well, then, uh, not that any of those albums are any good. But. Yes, I understand. But uh, Michael Henderson uh, passed away, bass player, uh, also plays Miles Davis, uh, but another one of those session guys, uh, backed up Stevie Wonder for a while uh, and had a solo, had a bass solo albums that he put out, believe it or not, several of them. Uh, passed away at the age of 71. Uh, Mark Fleischman passed away, a one-time owner of Studio 54, uh, mm. by, by assisted suicide in, Saint, in Switzerland at the age of 82. He'd, uh, he'd been, since 2016, been living with an undiagnosed medical condition that affected his ability to speak and confined him to a wheelchair. And they couldn't figure out what to do. And so he flew to Switzerland to end his life on his own terms at the age of 82. I guess that's legal there. It is legal there. Uh, oh, another bass player passed away, Paul Ryder, the original uh, bass player for uh, Happy Mondays, uh, passed away at the age of 58. Uh, it said he died suddenly, but I don't know from what. Uh, the lead singer of the Delphonics, uh, William Hart passed away. Uh, Delphonics were someone we voted on in our thing. I don't remember if they got in. I should have looked that up. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember. Uh, very, very good band. They are very, very good band. Uh, he he also wrote a bunch of their songs. But mm -hmm. He passed away at the age of seventy-seven. Uh, Barbara Thompson passed away, the saxophonist for mostly for uh, Manfred Mann's Earth Band. Uh, mm -hmm. Passed away at the age of seventy-seven. Uh, Adam Wade also passed away. Uh, he uh, is known for two things. One is he performed, uh, hit the charts a couple of times with songs of the late 50s and early 60s, including uh, Ruby, Take Good Care of Her, The Writing on the Wall, and a few others. More importantly, he was the host of the game show Musical Chairs in 1975, making him first African-American game show host in the United States. I'm not familiar with that show. I wasn't either. Uh, but yeah, he passed away at the age of 87. Okay. Uh, and Monty Norman is our last person in music, I believe, if I've done this correctly. Monty Norman passed away at the age of 94. Uh, he's an actor who appeared on a bunch of things, but probably best known for composing the, the James Bond theme. Oh, nice. One of, nice. Most, one of the most recognizable pieces of music in the world. Very much so. So, um, I gotta watch all those old ones again. Yeah, actually, what I watched the other day, I watched that uh, because my wife was gone. I was watching um, Moonraker, which I hadn't seen in decades. May not hold up as well as some of the others. <laughs> yeah, oh, for me, it's all it'll always be Connery. Understood. Yeah, uh, and just by the way, a few. A few famous actors passed away. Let's like bring them up quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, Gregory Itson, best known as uh, the president from Ch President Charles Logan from Twenty Four, uh, passed away at the age of seventy four. Uh, L. Q. Jones, who is basically in every single western you can possibly think of, uh, passed away at the age of ninety four. Just one of those guys on in everything, and, we, and he went all the way through like The Mask of Zorro in nineteen eighty ninety eight. He was 
just literally in the wild bunch, like Major Dundee, mm-hmm. Ride the High Country, any Peck and Paw thing, LQ Jones was in it somewhere. Um, I think I'll let that one go. Uh, we lost Tony Sirico. It's been a bad year. Holy Walnuts. People to play uh, playing mobsters. We lost Jimmy Kahn. We lost Tony Sirico. We lost uh, Henry Hill. Uh, in the Just, last couple months. You know, like, n- not somebody was ever going to act in anything else, but, I mean, David Chase, he said that, he, I, don't, I don't know if that was true or not, but he, he well, this part was, he, he cast basically Steve, Steve, uh, Steve, Stevie Van Zandt, Stevie Van Zandt, because just look at the guy, look at the way he looks. Yeah, right. It had to be the same. Yeah. Had to be. And it, it's not that I think he could have done, much, like, he never would have gotten another role like this anywhere in his life. Um, I think my favorite thing is because he really was a mobster. He said, like, I'll do this role, but my 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 character will never be a rat. Yeah, but I mean he played he played gangsters and tons of stuff. He was a good fella, a mighty Aphrodite, like whenever they're Yeah, but I mean it was things. never gonna be anything where he was gonna get any kind of billing where starring such and such. Yeah, I understood. Yeah. Understood. So he was also in Gaudi, which actually turns into something else. John Gotti's lawyer died, by the way, just uh, for the heck of it. I'll throw that out there. Gerald Shargle passed away at the age of 77. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, come back up here. Mickey Rooney Jr. passed away at the age also of 77. Okay. Not, not ha- did not have the career that his father did. I didn't know there was a Mickey Rooney Jr. Yeah, there, there's also a Tim Rooney and a Michael Rooney. Yeah. Um, I uh, Jack Knight from Bust Down and Big Mouth committed suicide at the age of 28. Uh, hmm. Which, yeah, there's a lot oh, is of- Oh, is that the comedian? Yeah, comedian. Okay, Correct. yeah. That's right. uh, Rebecca Balding uh, passed away at either the age of 73 or 74, and nobody's quite sure, but she was uh, one of those people in all the TV shows in the 70s, Bionic Women, Starsky and Hutch, Lou Grant, Barnaby Jones, Rockford Files. If you saw a picture, you're like, oh yeah, I remember her, if you're our age, hmm. you know what I mean? Uh, and I get the biggest name from this who passed away this week, Larry Storch, passed away at the age of 99. Uh, won an Emmy for F Troop and was uh, Mr. Whoopi in Tennessee Tuxedo. One of those old guys I thought had been dead for decades. Uh, I, I never heard of him until he appeared in a Married with Children episode. I never heard, I never saw F Troop. Ah, uh, there you go. Yeah, but he uh, passed away at the age of 99. Uh, and one last person I want to bring up, uh, but well, two two people. First of all, Delia Giovanola passed away, who led the Grandmothers of Plaza del Mayo, which is an Argentine group that uh, basically fought against the uh, Argentine government that was making people disappear. The uh, March of the Grandmothers is why Argentina's government fell. She was the leader of that. She passed away at the age of ninety six. Okay. I'm gonna look that shit up. That sounds fascinating. Yeah, so they were they were making people disappear in public dissidents, and they had March of Grandmothers. Like the grandmothers all got together and dared the soldiers to shoot them, and the soldiers refused to shoot unarmed old women. Wow! And the government fell. If the soldiers wouldn't listen, the government fell, and democracy took over. And that well, that's what happened. What actually happened was they invaded the Falklands as a result, and then that got their ass kicked, and then the government really fell. So, hmm. if I'm ever famous enough to be on Drunk History, the Falkland Islands is what I'm going to be talking about, just so you know, um, and, and how, why there's a war between the UK and-, and You, uh, well, you have an IMD pay, IMDB page. I guess, I guess- We're, that is we're a step closer than we were, huh? That is true, I guess, yeah. But that, just as a teaser, it involves Argentina, Spain, El Salvador, the Dutch, the French, the English, uh, but, and, but, but let's and just the United States. Let's just be here. If, so, if someone's going to guest star on Drunk History, shouldn't it be me? Probably. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Also, John Freund of the Chicago 7, who led the uh, riots in Chicago during the 1968 um, Democratic Convention, passed away at the age of 83. Well, the person I want to bring up more than anyone was, do you, is Maurice Boucher mean anything to you guys up in Canada? Nope. Well, not to me. He's, he's a, Can- a Canadian gangster, convicted murderer, drug trafficker, an outlaw biker, president of the Hells Angel Quebec chapter. It kind of looked as like a Quebecois folk hero. 
I had never heard of him before, so I just want to know if there you knew anything I, about. The him. only thing I know, because like I don't know too much about gangsters. Period. Uh, I know I know that there's quite a bit of bit of a Montreal underworld. That's all I know. Yeah, there was like a apparently there was like a biker war in Quebec. I did well, hear about that, but I mean, I I, I didn't pay attention to it because it wasn't that interesting to me but yeah that's I am I mean. that's more prevalent there than it was growing up in toronto that's all i really yeah so that. that was it i just was wondering because he was a in lot toronto. that's an awful lot uh i two weeks and I, there were a lot of interesting yeah. people so i try to go through it as quickly as possible but anyway well yeah it's, it's a hard thing to do because you also want to put some respect on their names too so right yeah uh, so my, my so the next section is elevator up, elevator down, where I look at who, I guess in this case, the past two weeks have really made more of a Hall of Fame case, and who hasn't. Uh, I don't have an elevator down, but a quick elevator up is so simple. Shohei Watani, who for the second time has appeared as an all star, as both a, a, in like in two capacities because he was he, he got in as a pitcher also. Uh, Otani's in his late twenties. He's got to do it all now. I mean, there's not even a guarantee that he's going to play 10 years to even qualify. So it's got to be one hell of a 10 year, 10 year run. And especially when you're his size, you get injured pretty quick. So uh, just a, another shout out to someone who doesn't need my shout out. But if you're, if you're not watching him play, I mean, I, I don't know who's going to get you into baseball at this point. Yeah. Uh, but my elevator up is my bigger elevator up is someone who I had as an elevator down before because I've been thinking about it more. And that's Vince McMahon. Interesting. Yes. Because who decides who gets into the WWE Hall of Fame? Uh, Vince McMahon. Right. Now, the only reason he's not in it is because, and what I thought up until recently, it was just the only time he's ever been humble in his life. But then I thought about it. And I think anyone who knows that name, even if you're not a wrestling fan, you probably heard he's in trouble for basically turned out about $12 million now combined in hush money to women that he slept with to keep quiet, which I guess didn't work. That's going to be a theme just so you guys know coming up here. Oh, so. yes. Yes. And that's going to be a major thing when that blows up later. And I'm looking forward to, to, to go into that because that will tie in with potential elevator downs. But Vince, right after all this happened and he stepped down, went on camera and he did it again. So he did it twice. So if anyone sort of has the balls to say, fuck you and put himself in, it's him. I think the only reason he didn't put himself in before is because he didn't want to say that my career is over. Right. And right now, I think he might just say, screw it, fuck him, because that's what he thinks. That's how he thinks. And now, realistically, he should, but he should be in, but still, it's the whole thing. It's the most bizarre yeah. thing for wrestling. And I'll finish up with what I said two weeks ago. It's far more interesting watching what's going on behind the scenes than what the hell's on TV. Fair enough. I didn't yeah. even watch it. There, there was the Money in the Bank pay per view couple of weeks ago i forgot all about it didn't even watch it didn't even realize it, was, it happened until it was over inconceivable for me just a few years ago now it's a chore it's a chore to watch it so i don't so yeah so that's my elevator up and that sort of like bleeds into the final segment uh the good evans good 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 bad and ugly of sports easy for me to say hello So <clears throat> the good, as you may know, I am up on Vegas uh, in my career here. I, uh, I bet $10 on roulette and uh, one of the old casinos uh, just off the strip. <clears throat> I, they hit on the last one, so I'm up $26 on Vegas. And I'm never going to gamble again because I'm up on Vegas. I'm up on the casinos, right? And casinos, of course, are not built with winner's money. No, they're not. So... <clears throat> Rule 30 of life, by the way. I have 31 rules. That's rule 30. Um, so uh, I want to just give a quick shout out to the Baltimore Orioles. Hmm. The Baltimore Orioles came into the, this season as a 2,500 to 1 shot to win the World Series. And they looked terrible. At the start, yes. season. They just won 10 in a row. They're at 500. They're three and a half, 
uh, out coming into tonight, out of the last spot in the pl- in the playoffs because the playoffs has expanded. And once they're into the playoffs, who knows what's going to happen, right? But the exposure that the casinos are facing, they have one guy who put $1,000 in at, uh, let me just make sure, at 500 to 1 because when they started getting good, they mm-hmm. started getting more bets in. So some put 1,000 at 500 to win and another one at 1,000 at 250 to 1 for them just to win the pennant, right? Also several bets in at 2,000 and 1,000 to 1 odds. I'm a Red Sox fan. The Orioles are in my division. I want nothing bad, nothing good to ever happen to the Angel- Angelos family because they're snake oil salesmen. But I would just love for the casinos to take a bath like they haven't. You know what the biggest bath they took recently was? Because I'm excited about this. My team that mm-hmm. I care about, the 2015 Leicester City, was at 5,000 to 1 odds to win the uh, Premier League back in 2015. And there were several bets from Leicester City fans who took those odds. Mm-hmm. And you they know, got killed. You know what I never asked you? I, I, I've always known that was your team. I, I, was that your team well before 2015? No. Okay. No, because, but here's the thing. Rooting for Leicester City is very much like rooting for the Boston Bruins. Their, their team is very, very similar in the way they make up and the way they play and everything. Like, Jamie Vardy is Brad Marchand. Okay. <laughs> and so right. it was just like, it was, it was easy to fall into. I mean, that, I was a Premier League agnostic. Like, I didn't care as long as Chelsea didn't win. And now the problem with that is that back then, the problem mm-hmm. now is like all the American players are in Chelsea, so I don't know what to do. Um, so uh, yeah, I I am uh, I just became a Lester of, of a member of the Fox Nation, I guess, in a weird way. I never thought I'd say that that way, uh, <laughs> but uh, but because of 2015 and rooting for them and all the whole way through in the underdog and everything, so. Yeah, but I just I love the idea that the Orioles are going to make the playoffs. Plus, they're making that the Yankees don't win the World Series, uh, which I'm more than okay with. They the may Orioles not make the playoffs. playoffs. There's a long way to go. Oh, there's still a long way to go, right. but they're closer than the Angels at this point. So imagine that the Angels with two once in a lifetime players at the same time, and they can't even get 500 because the the players around them are crap. It's it's ridiculous, and that's well, actually not, gonna, not all of them, but. Not all of them, but that's actually going to lead me into my bad. The Angels? The Angels. Uh, actually, Mike Trout. Uh, it's not Mike Trout himself. It's, okay. Mike Trout may never play another playoff game in his entire career. Because Pretty he possible. signed a contract mm-hmm. that locked him in with one team. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this brings me to... Another terribly run franchise. This, by the way, you want terribly run franchises, you don't really have to get outside the beltway uh, of, of the middle of the country, except for the Ravens. Uh, the Ravens are pretty well run. But the rest of those teams are pretty garbage. Uh, the Washington Nationals, I'm not sure who's in charge of negotiating for them and what they thought they were getting out of putting out there that their 22-year-old superstar, Juan Soto, turned down $440 million. Like, if that's making him look bad or how that's going to help him come back or whatever. I, I don't get the logic on that at all. Uh, if it's 4D chess, well, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't understand it. Juan Soto is another, there's another special player. Yeah, but here's, here's the thing. Uh, that's less than, it's 15 years. That's, he's 22. That's going to keep until he's 37. That's less than $30 million a year, which seems like a lot of money to you and I. But let me tell you, with the way salaries are going, presuming baseball doesn't entirely collapse under the weight of actually having to pay their minor leaguers some money. <laughs> um, uh, the, uh, he's going to be like the 75th highest paid player like six years in seven years into that why would he ever sign that contract and why would he be mike trout part two on the east coast it's a very good point and that's what he knows and that's what most people looking understand really quickly like was it correa signed bet on himself and signed 
a short-term contract and signed a bigger short-term contract? Just bet on yourself, dude. Mm -hmm. so go through arbitration and if they want to pay you great if they don't want to pay you if that's fine too but get four or five years forget the 17 season thing like it's great to stay with the same franchise but like is it worth it that much to you to be with a franchise that won a world series and let's be honest hasn't exactly been the uh paragon of how to run a franchise since then yeah, but you always look good compared to the Reds or Redskins. Football team, commanders, I'll never get used to that. It doesn't matter. The team name's changing in two years when they finally get uh, Snyder out of there. So I have a feeling in two years he's still going to be there. Well, if he's there, well, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going to finish that sentence. Um, but the Washington Nationals right now are 31 and 63 this season. That is the worst record in baseball. Why would he want to hitch his wagon to a team for the next 15 years that's going to be underpaying him four years from now? Like, the negotiating, it doesn't make, the Nationals thing on this makes absolutely no sense. None. Like, they're just isolating one of the most exciting, amazing players. By the way, they, do you know who his, to, oh, let me, I got to pull this up. His top comps through age 22 season are? Who's that? Hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the uh, – I, I, I have to read you this list. Hold on. Juan Soto stats. Okay. Juan Soto's closest comparison through his age 22 season. Number 10, Ken Griffey Jr. Number 9, Giancarlo Stanton. Number 8, Orlando Cepeda. Number seven, Henry Aaron. I heard of him. Number six, probably the name that stands out as the weirdest on this list where people don't remember him, Tony Canigliaro, who was a hell of a baseball player before he got hit in the eye with baseball, and it just affected his ability to do anything after that. Number five, Mickey Mantle. Number four, Miguel Cabrera. Number three, Bryce Harper. Number two, Frank Robinson. And the most similar player to him, through his age 22 season, is Mike Trout. Who many <laughs> consider to be perhaps the greatest baseball player ever. Like, this isn't just anybody. This isn't even a generational player. Like, this is a multi-generational player that they're playing hardball with stupidly. And I don't get it. Maybe this is the way they say they can't afford him? I don't know. But, I don't know. As a former partial season ticket holder with oh. the Washington Nationals. I didn't know that. Yeah, I, when I lived down there, mm -hmm. like, I just don't get what he's doing. He's arbitration eligible this season. He's making $17.1 million this year. He's going like, to be making, what, 21, 22 next year. They'll be at 30 the year after that while still in arbitration. Why would he ever sign that contract? It doesn't make any sense. And releasing it makes even less sense. And I have no idea what the Nationals are doing. But every team in the greater D.C. area needs new ownership. Capitals do? Uh, well, maybe not the Capitals, but they, I don't know. Yeah, the Capitals seem to be. All right, the Capitals are exempt. I honestly, yeah, I'm not even, off the top of my head, I couldn't even tell yeah, you. Yeah, but the. Yeah. The Wizards, the, uh, <laughs> the what do we name the football team this week, and the Nationals all need help. So. I, I'm always amazed that that fan base in Washington just stands firm no matter what. I, I, if you, if anyone's got an excuse to bail without ownership, I think we'd give them a pass, right? Yeah, or I mean, yeah, the Lions, the Bears, the Knicks. Mm. There's a few like that. When I was a kid, the Maple Leafs. Well, I do have to point out, we didn't talk about this last time, but the Knicks signed Jalen Brunson basically because Jalen Brunson's agent is the brother of the general manager, assistant general manager of the Knicks. And he never even, he never even took a meeting with the Mavericks. Never even took the meeting. I like Brunson, but... Eh. Yeah, I don't know. The Knicks, the Knicks in uh, 
Lakers seem to be in the midst of having made deals with with agencies and can't get out of it. All right, since we're there, before we go into the ugly, uh, did we talk about Kyrie saying, he, oh yeah, one of the teams he wants to play with is the Lakers? Didn't you run no, away from that guy before? He's the only guy, yeah, I know. Like, what's changed in the last four years? Here's, yeah, well, here's what's changed the last four years is his entire reputation went to hell. But I, I have to say, having seen what's gone on with, with Kyrie Irving, when we saw what happened with Antonio Brown and, and Bell and everyone in, mm-hmm. in Pittsburgh and they left, you got to have a much greater respect for Mike Tomlin. After seeing like Kyrie Irving being kept in check, I have a much greater respect for Ty Lue. <laughs> <laughs> Just being able to manage that ego. He apparently is the only one who's been able to since then. Well, it's not just the ego. It's just the character. I mean, like, you just don't know what you're dealing with. So, I, you know what part of the, the car crash, Watcher and me, would love to see it. I'm not a Lakers guy, so it doesn't affect me one way or the other. I'm a Lakers hater, so. Yeah. I mean, the only I, team I, I know. I would love to see. I would love to see, like, Here's a question. The Lakers team, are they actually good? No. Like, like it, does Kyrie make them good? I, I think in some games he will, but I mean, like, the same problems are going to just rear their head. I don't know. So. I mean, you're now adding another older player who... Has got he's he's got issues as we know. Had issues with playing with that guy with him before, because he wanted out. I mean, that like uh, LeBron didn't. LeBron has chased a lot of players off off his teams. Kyrie wasn't one of them. That is true. So, because uh, from what I remember, I think uh, LeBron was kind of blindsided. So Kyrie is also, I mean, when he left, he said, I want to, I want to lead a team as you know, as well as anyone as a Celtics guy. And I'm sure you were pretty excited about a whole lot of that, but is Kyrie. Uh, we, we were weird about it because we we're trading Isaiah Thomas. who basically just willed the team as much as he could. Right. As a but, guy. Yeah. But that, there's, no, there's no question. Kyrie is a much better player than Isaiah Thomas. But at the time there wasn't. Yeah, there wasn't. And, but at the same time, like we all kind of felt weird about it. because we knew we got the better player in the trade. Uh, and then Kyrie came out and said that he was going to resign with Boston when he got to the initial thing, and then he quit in the playoffs in the the Buck series. Yeah. So, and then all Boston fans blew. I'm not saying Boston is the greatest city in the world for racial history. I I, I, on. I, yeah, I know. Yeah. Who, who, who I don't know where he's. He must be getting that from Kyrie because he's been asked about that multiple times for this and. Said he's never had any problems at all. So I know other people have. Tory Hunter has, and other people have as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will tell you that Boston fans do not boo Kyrie because of the color of his skin. Mm-hmm. They boo Kyrie because of who Kyrie is and what he did to the city. Yeah, it's uh, it'll be interesting. That's the NBA is another another league where it's almost just well. It's, it's almost like the WWE. It's sometimes far more interesting what's going on behind the scenes. Well, that's happening in baseball, too. I mean, all the questions at the All-Star game, I didn't see the game, but I did see, like, all the breathless headlines that Judge wouldn't confirm he's going to resign with the Yankees. Like, we're already into the offseason in the middle of the season. It's crazy. Well, that's what keeps sports media going. But uh, you're ugly. It's uh, this has some serious, serious. Uh, if if there's one thing that keeps sports media going more than speculation, it's scandal. And here we um, go. Uh, look yeah. at this. Look at this. Uh, dual segue that we just sort of did. Here. Yeah, here we go. We're we're tying back into something we talked about earlier. This is something that has been talked about a ton here in the U.S. There, here it has. Oh yeah, sorry. Here in the U.S., you're not in the U.S. Yeah, uh, but here in the U.S., you're high upon. Up, up, Mount Manitoba. Uh, yeah, heard. Mount Manitoba. And uh, yeah, uh, but yeah, go, go into it. So there were allegations um, which are recently coming to light made against the 
Canadian junior team in 2018. Mm -hmm. um, from what has been reported, the statements were given by all the players involved. They all said that the situation was consensual and that in 2019, they found no reason, the police in Canada found no reason to prosecute because they couldn't prove anything. Okay. But, and that's bad enough as it is. You know, that's a he said, she said, we don't know the truth about it. That's super bad, but it's not the really bad thing. It, it's not the worst thing about this. But before you go there, it's not just a he said, she said. It's a he said, 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 she said. Correct. So here is the real issue. The, there are seven members of this 2018 squad uh, who are not who have not been named because they were underage at the time, uh, who are, are are part of this. But even after that, the Cocky Canada settled for I believe it was fifteen million. Sorry, settled with this woman mm -hmm. to try and get it out of the news. More importantly, though, they set up a fund of fifteen million dollars to settle sexual assault allegations by their members that was paid for by the fees that families paid for youth hockey to enroll their kids in Canadian hockey program. It's bad. I mean, the fact that, they're, they're, that they even had to create a fund to have this exist. Uh, hockey players have, I would say out of the big four sports have probably the best reputation mainly because they know to keep their mouth shut when the camera's on. It's not that they're necessarily any cleaner than the other than other players mm -hmm. it's just their ranks are tighter if that makes any sense mm -hmm. you know so this shit's been going as uh, again from what we talked about with Terran flurry just uh, like all that other disgusting shit uh when we brought about i can't i'm blanking on the name of the blackhawks player who was uh, uh like, right, like ryan beach yes thank you uh whose life was pretty much ruined uh you know, you know, from that. So this is obviously something that has come up. This is not going to go away. Uh, that's even something that uh, our prime minister, there, here we go. Oh, I agree with him on something else again. This, you know, was discussed by it. And I think, he, you know, this is going to put some added pressure on the entire thing. There are some very big names on that team. Yeah. Uh, Kale McCarr is on that team. Yep. Jordan Kyrie is on that team. Robert Thomas is on that team. I'm not saying that they have any, I have no idea. Yeah. But they are three, but those are three big names on a roster of what, 25, 26? And, you know, seven of them are involved. Yeah. And we, well, I think I saw Robert Thomas is probably, they think he's probably not involved because they know that two of the people who were born in 99, mm -hmm. uh, which there are only three people on the team born in 99, and Robert Thomas has come out and be like, this has nothing to do with me. I wasn't there. I wasn't in the city. I was like not anywhere near this which seemed to be pretty easy things to prove or disprove. Like mm -hmm. he said, he wasn't even in the city of London, Ontario. Because I, I didn't even know that. So Yeah. So he yeah. said he wasn't even in the city thereof. Mm -hmm. So either he was or he wasn't, but he's one of the, he's one of the three guys born that year. So it's probably the other two. Um, but, uh, and I don't want to speculate any more than that, but uh, yeah, this is, this is not good. Uh, and, and there's one thing that we have learned over the last period of time here it's that covering it, it's it's a general's daughter color did you ever see the general's daughter no but i know the plot yeah so the question is he asked james wood john travolta asked james wood what's being covered up here murder is like worse than murder rape worse than rape what's worse than rape when you know that you know the answer to everything the answer to the, the what's worse than rape is denying that rape exists that's what the whole thing is mm -hmm. and we're in a situation in which routinely with the women's gymnastics, with Larry Nasser, with uh, with now the hockey stuff that's been going on with the block, with the Blackhawks, all it's all over the place. It's the, the denial and the cover up of it is far worse than just coming out with it and dealing with it. To like I don't know to hide a PR hit. I I just. But that know, but, the worst but, thing but, is but, they thought they were behind it because they created the damn the damn slush fund. That's the thing that gets me more. Yeah. And 
it, it's a culture that you'd like to think is gone, but it isn't. Correct. Because this is only a few years ago. That's, yeah. we're not far removed from any of this. And I don't know what the end result of, of this is going to be, but if they think it's going away, it's not. No. And I, I don't know where this goes from here. Well, I guess I, I guess do. I but it, it's not going to be covered. It's not. It's out. It's, it's out. And I mean, Stan Bowman swung in with the Blackhawks for everything going on. Mm -hmm. um, John Gruden swung in the NHL or NFL for something far less. Oh, it's just by the way, one thing mm -hmm. NFL, if you suspend, yep. if he gets suspended less than, uh, Calvin than, Ridley. than what? Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley, who was betting on games he was not participating in. Like while on injured reserve and knew nothing about, he put a fifteen hundred dollar bet down on a game that he had no connection to and had nothing to know. Like, and he's banned for a year, but twenty four sexual assault allegations is going to get. Is that saying a two day game ban somewhere between two and eight? If he gets less than Ridley, if he gets less than Brady, who may or may not have known about somebody possibly deflating footballs which hasn't been proved and they said to court they had no proof actually happened what the fuck are we doing i'm sorry i don't know i don't know i mean i based on everything you would think it'd be a two-year ban right i mean you set the press i just <sighs> that's the thing about about article 44 he could suspend him for anything for as long as he wants like that that's what came out of the whole brady case so it doesn't even matter. He could just suspend him because the sky is yellow. Like, that, that's what came out of that case. You don't have to prove anything happened. You can just suspend someone. The commissioner has the power to do that. Why do you care? I, I, I honestly don't know. Like, yeah, I have a feeling we're going to be talking about that quite a bit more soon. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I, I don't see how it can't not be a year. But from what you've heard, from what we've read. Let it be let it be a year like it let it be a year and let them sue the browns expected to be a year. that's why they built the contract the way they built it those guys should swing by the way as well um but like the, i just i don't get it. like but we, we see that going back to the hockey yeah. this is over and over and again going back to sean watson the texans basically got him hotel rooms so this stuff could happen. Mm -hmm. Like, we just at a point where the good old boys, boys will be boys situation that should never have been occurring in the first place, you just cannot get away with anymore. Yeah, but at the same time, though, th this is sort of coddling other athletes. The WNBA is the worst defender of them all. You know, because nobody, Liz Cambridge should have been suspended. 100%. Nothing. Nothing happened to her. Uh, domestic violence happens all the time. Very rarely are they all, or they, or they, they get suspended. That's the other thing I, uh, that sort of irks me. Treat it like again, and I and I mean that, and I hope this comes off the way I mean it. But treat them like men, because then you would be, then you would have them with the same statistical respect that I want to, you know, that you want to put on their name for that. But also at the same time, if you fuck up, you're you're going to pay the same penalty. So. so but yeah, I mean, so, so, it's predominantly boys will be boys. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but, but so here's a question. A lot of people are calling for like the complete overhaul of Hockey Canada after this, which I completely understand, right? Do you think that actually happens or no? No. No, it'll just be, you're going to get a few scapegoats. And there'll be a lot of people who are going to, who are going to be, who are going to get, who knew everything that was going on and will still keep their jobs. Uh, whoever sort of set up the fund. I mean, there's, there's certainly going to be, but you never know. I mean, it depends on how much the government's going to get involved. Uh, you know, this is a country that in 1989 spent millions on an inquiry just to get Ben Johnson to say he took steroids. 
Now, it wasn't just that you know, all sorts of shit came out from a lot of the other Canadian Olympians. So right. if they decide to go all in on this, then yeah, I mean, this could be a, a giant overhaul of everything, but can't. But in Canada, hockey's religion. It's a lot more different than doing this to a sprinter who, at that time, they just said, Jamaican-born sprinter. All of a sudden, he was Jamaican again. You know, so it's... Yeah, but I mean, having grown up in Boston where Catholicism is religion and having gone through the sexual abuse scandal there mm -hmm. uh, where apparently homosexuality is a sin, but pedophilia can be, you know, can be solved just by moving a priest to a different church. Yeah. Uh, like, there was massive fall for that, but of course the guy in charge, the cardinal, mm -hmm. still there. It, it, it's hard to say. I mean, like, I don't know what how they're going to do. Obviously, someone's head should roll. Um, not And not just the people who did this, but you know, you know, yeah, there, there, there is a culture involved. I mean, so this obviously isn't the first time they've had to pay people out. And I'm sure that's happened in other countries too, but in Canada, it's, again, it's very different because, how do I put this? Right. Girls are more likely to chase hockey players in this country than other other athletes. Okay. So there's a bit of sense of this weird entitlement that some of the some of the men will have. Mm -hmm. Much more like I guess like an American basketball player. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Yeah. So you know we're asking a lot sometimes of 17, 18 year olds to sort of like conduct themselves like they would like we would if they were 40, you know, it, it, it's a very, it's a mind fuck, which, and this is no excuses, no, no condoning anything. I hope it doesn't sound like that, but it'll be very interesting to see what, what happens if anything, but I, this isn't going to go away. No, 100%. It, it's not, nor should it, nor should it. It's, it's going to be very much a national scandal. Or it is. Yeah. It, it already is whether it reaches to the point because we are in more of a 24-hour news cycle than we were and when everything broke up with uh taryn flurry and sheldon kennedy back in back in the day so that was more that stuck around longer than this could but if this goes into some type of inquiry because obviously if you're hockey canada you want to sort of like you've already got way behind it so they're trying to figure out who, you're, who they're putting on the sword Has yeah, to. You yeah, you got you to gotta sweep this under the rug as fast as possible and get out of things. You have to. You have to. So uh, pretty much a lot of people in the top should step down because obviously they were aware of that. And it's not like you don't have lots of great Canadian administrators who can take over. Right. You know, so that really shouldn't be a problem. And maybe that might have been something that you could have put someone like Haley Lippenheiser in. I don't know if she was qualified to be a, the assistant GM for the Leafs, but she's certainly qualified to uh, maybe do something like this. Think she, sure. you know, would, she, would she let that roll? I don't know. I don't think so. Who knows? They need someone like that, though, to take over to make it seem like a clean image. Well, and then that would be a great way to go. Now, she's already got a pretty good job that she may not want to leave, but that might be the way you look. And is this like one of those diversity hires? Well, yeah, maybe. So the fuck what? We're going to say that, that some of the greatest Canadian women couldn't do this in junior hockey. Like, they can't evaluate talent. Of course they can. Right. So that's just uh, my two cents on this. Uh, this will be something that we're going to follow a lot. Yeah. And yeah. I, we're going to give this a lot of attention. But with that, with that, hey, I wrote a book. You did? I did. I did. I think, I think maybe people, you know, it would be a great uh, sort of uh, – Good present for people if you're a wrestling fan which i guess i'm not anymore but anyway uh chavo guerrero instant classic i uh, helped him write his autobiography before he passed away chavo guerrero senior check that out on amazon uh we recorded another uh, how the hell did this go number to number one where we looked at uh uh culture club karma chameleon ah yes yes so that's that's recorded so look for definitely that. the best mississippi uh uh riverboat themed mu uh music video of all time Yes, it's, it's. I loved how everyone was in costume, but boy, George. <laughs> I, I, 
I didn't know that 1870 Mississippi was that liberal. I had no clue. Yeah, you know. Yeah, they must have went really backwards since then. Sorry, Mississippi. Feel better about your own state. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so that that's in the tank. Uh, we, next week, we're looking at, what the hell did they pick? I didn't pick it. I can't even remember. Oh, I remember. Mbop. The end of good music of the 90s. I disagree. I'm actually going to defend that song. Okay. I'm actually going to defend it. I, they were, but they're three teens. I mean, well, what did you expect them to do? True. You know, I, it's, it's not their fault that went number one. They just did the best they could. But anyway, yeah, we're going to look at that. Uh, Chris Bernay and I finally picked something that we're going to look at. We were going to look at Auto Man on our other show, which is uh, this crap was on national television. But when we found it, uh, we found that the pilot was in Spanish. Ah. And me no habla. But I did find the Harlem Globetrotters visit Gilligan's Island. Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> yep. So I'm pretty that's, so I'm looking massive, forward to that. massive plot hole in Gilligan's Island. The basketball team could just go and leave, and they're still stuck there. Well, no, but by this point, this was turned into a resort. Oh, is that what happened? Okay. Yes. But that's not, I'm sure that's not even the biggest plot hole. If I remember right, this was the original Space Jam. After we watch it, I haven't yet. So the original Space Jam, because the Globetrotters had to play robots. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, as robots, they're still better actors than Wayne Gretzky. So. <laughs> Who's worse, Wayne Gretzky in anything or Sean Bradley in Space, Space Jam? Christian Leitner on the 92 Dream Team. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that popped into my head, but it did. Oh, it's great. It's great. <laughs> anyway, uh, right. Last, last and, of the plugs. And, week, hmm? and next week, you're going to get a new co host for the week because I, yeah, yes, I have uh, my annual trip to the middle of nowhere. Middle of nowhere, yes. So another fellow Chicagoan is going to take over. Uh, Jack Silverstein, follow him at uh, Read Jack, and you should. Jack sure. writes some pretty good, really good, very, very good stuff. And I got to help him with his article very slightly this week. So yes, thank, yes. thank you for it. Well, yeah, because I, I he put he put in our group that he was looking for semifinals, and I well, well shit, I know someone who's been logging that. Yeah, you know someone who has an unhealthy obsession with with uh, spreadsheets. That'd be me. Good, good thing too. Sort of helps mm -hmm. help me out many times. So with that. Wherever you are, wherever you may be, stay safe, everybody. Take care, guys.